Welcome back fellow space engineers, I am the Linking Tinker and this is the third video in the tutorial series on how to use the Easy Automation program. Now in this tutorial we're going to be going over how to use the if and when statements. These statements, as I said before, are the meat of this program. You'll be using them quite a bit to get all of your automations to happen. So let's get started by creating a code block and we'll call this code block the if one exam so at if when exam there we go open curly bracket close curly bracket all right and now we shall add a button to access that and we'll link it up to the tutorial programming block run it with the argument of the LCD name, so tutorial LCD and then in the brackets the if when exam there we go and we'll also give ourselves a light and a piston Oops. There we go. <laughs> okay, and we'll rename those to toot fist and toot light. Excellent. So now we've got the code block, a button that references it, and some stuff to play with. Let's enter the code. We'll begin with the if statement. So in the private text, we'll say if, and then after the if, we're going to put down either an action name, a slider name, or a name of something in the detailed info. And we'll take a look at the piston because that has all three of those. So we can toggle the block on or off, and that's an action, the on off action. So we can say if on off, and we also have some sliders here. So we've got velocity slider and we can check what it's at. And we've also got some detailed info. And this detailed info has a value called current position and we can check the current position. So let's start with the action. So we'll go back here and say if on off of toot pissed equals one then on the next line after that it will do what you ask it to so on off toot light so if this is the on off of the two pist oh i said one there no i mean on okay <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself all right so if on off of toot pist equals on then turn toggle the light on or off when you press the button. So since the piston is currently on, the button will toggle the light. And if the piston is off, the button can no longer toggle the light. Cool. And you can also put down off here to check for the opposite. So since the piston is off, the button works. And also you can exchange those terms for true or false. And true means on and false means off. It's just what you prefer to type down. And let's see here. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for the action. You can check whether it's on or off, true or false, and so on. So for sliders, we just take something from the slider list like velocity. If velocity of toot pissed equals one, then we can turn the light on and off. And currently it is at negative 0.5. So the button does not work. But if we put it to exactly one, then 
will turn on and off. Cool. So how often is the tutorial piston's velocity at exactly one meter per second? Well, probably not very often. So let's check for something a little more general. So let's say if it is less than or greater than one. So let's check that now. So the piston is currently off and it can still check whether it's greater or lesser than. And since it's equal to exactly one right now, it's not working because it's not greater than one. And if we bring it to greater than one, it works. Perfect. Let's turn that piston back on so we can see, actually see what it's doing. There we go. It's on and greater than one. All right, so in here we've got now the last value, which is the detailed info. And in the piston, we have a current position detailed info, and we can check what that number is. And it's important to remember that you have to write it down exactly as you see it here in the detailed info. So current position with a capital C and a lowercase p. We'll go in here and say current position. If the current position of the tutorial piston is greater than one, and then we have to put M here, because if you don't have the unit indicator, then you might be messing up, say if it's kilometers instead of meters. And with a piston, that doesn't really matter, but with say, something that has a longer range it can so if you don't put that number right there you're going to run into a problem let's do that right now actually to show you what happens so we'll do that and press the button and now let's take a look in the programming block it says one does not contain a recognized unit indicator such as m or km so we know that we messed up and we've got to Put that here so one meter current position of the tutorial piston is greater than one meter then we can toggle the light on and off and it works because the piston is currently above one meter in position cool now there is a special case and that is for rotors and that has in a degree symbol and to put a degree symbol down you have to know an alt code which I can't remember off the top of my head. So I basically got around that by saying you can put in, instead of the degree symbol, you can put a D. So if you're checking a rotor's current angle, you'd write it down just like this, and then you'd put a number and then a D at the end of it instead of this degree symbol. So or in here we can say if current angle of rotor and that's not a unique name so it might cause some problems with some other stuff on the same station so I'm not actually going to run it I'm just doing this for an example so if current angle of rotor is say greater than 30 degrees. So you can just put a D at the end instead of that uh, degree symbol. All right, cool. So that's how you do each of the different types of checks on the actions, sliders, and detailed info. So you can also have multiple if statements. As you saw, I just put another if statement in that same code block separated by a, an empty line. So we can say, we'll just copy this here and paste it. If current position of the tutorial piston is, we'll say this time, less than one meter, then we will give it the ability to reverse itself. So toot pissed, reverse toot pissed. Okay, so now 
the button switches its capacity depending on what the situation is. So we'll bring that tutorial piston back. Now, while it's below one meter, we have control over the piston's reversal. But once it gets above one meter, we lose that control and we gain control to toggle the light on and off. So, piston, light. Cool. All right. So this empty line basically indicates the end of this if statement. So if the current position of, is greater than one, then it will do this. But if it's not, then it will continue running all the instructions on down the line until it gets to this empty line here. And then it will start executing everything below that. So if it's false, skips this and then does this. Uh, well, then checks this. And if this is false, then it does nothing. If it's true, it does something. And so on and so forth. But if we don't have that empty line there, we have a nested if statement. This means that if this is false, then it will skip over absolutely everything here because there's no empty line. But if it's true, then it'll run this and then it will check if this is true. And this statement is kind of a nonsensical statement because first it's checking if it's above one meter and if it is above one meter, it checks if it's below one meter. Of course, it's not gonna be. So let's let's do something that makes a little more sense. So if on off of the tutorial light is off, then we'll be able to reverse the piston. So now it checks if it's above one meter, then it will toggle the light and then we're going to check if the light is off, then we will reverse the piston. So in this case, oh, what did I do wrong there? All right. <laughs> oh, I had, I had the wrong symbol there. If it equals off, okay. So now it only reverses when the light turns on and it won't do anything if it gets past one meter so yeah that's basically the gist of how you use if and when statements as well as a special case for the rotor and oh also there are a few things that you cannot check and you can see those inside the uh, the code editor here. If you scroll down here, you'll see a third list. This is the list of sliders and actions that are not currently supported by the if and when statements. And we have color, background color, font color, and image. So you can't check those. I haven't added that functionality. Maybe in the future, maybe not. Oh yes. So now we are going to be going over the when statement. I'm going to do the when statement. It's basically handled exactly like the if statement. So instead of checking if the current position of the tutorial piston is greater than one meter, we will check when the current position of the tutorial piston is greater than one meter. Then it will turn, or then it will toggle the light. All right. So right now it is less than one meter. Let's extend it here so right now we can see it's greater than one meter so it just activates but if it's less than one meter so we press the button now it does nothing but it actually is doing something the programming block here is running over and over again many 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 times very quickly and each time it runs it's checking whether this is true or not whether the piston has gotten over one meter. So let's extend the piston and make that true. So there it goes. Don't know if you saw that. Let's do that again. So we'll reverse it and we'll set it to a slower number like 0.3. There we go. So now when it gets past one meter, 
Oh, it should have toggled the light. Oh, I didn't press the button again. Derp. <laughs> All right. So now it is below one meter. We'll press the button and reverse the tutorial piston. And now when it gets above one meter, toggles the light. Okay, there we go. All right, good to go. All right, so that is pretty much the end of this tutorial. You now know how to use the if and when statements. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to use the variables and self-referencing code. And these uh, little tidbits allow you to make very complex pieces of machinery with very little code, because you can reuse some of the code you used as well as ch uh, activate certain variables and stuff like that. So I will see you in that tutorial. So yeah, I'll see you later.